there were no standard. It's like a Koenigsegg of today. You're sitting down with the producer, with a paper, and the producer asks, how do you want your car? How do you want a motorbike? Normally I work as a photographer and, and journalist and I'm writing about uh, old motorbikes and cars as well. That is about 50% uh, of my, my living. The rest of my time I'm dealing with my motorbikes. I have, uh, I think I have 50 motorbikes, yeah, around that. It could be a full-time work because it's really time consuming. After every weekend, after every race, there's always something. I have a normal car, a Volkswagen. It's from 2012, I think. And it's a very reliable car. But then you think that you're, this bike, my Braff Superior, is from 1925. And you think, oh yes, it will just run and run and run. And by, of course it doesn't, because it's almost 100 years old. It was manufactured in the autumn of 1924. It's a Braff Superior, the model called the SS80, Sport Special, and 80 is the top speed, 80 miles per hour. In the mid 20s, that was really, really fast motorbikes. Maybe it's an ambitious uh, comparison, but it's like a Koenigsegg of today. You're sitting down with a producer, with a paper, and and the producer asks, how do you want your car? How do you want a motorbike? And you're, yeah, I want those kind of wheels, I want uh, that kind of petrol tank, those kind of uh, mud guards, and, uh, and so on. There were no standard. Everything was made special order. So I know exactly how it was uh, fitted when leaving the factory on the 6th of January 1925. It was found 60 years later, 1985, by a good friend of mine on Ireland, a big collector called John Ellis. My good friend, uh, Bo Ingmarsson, he found it there as a basket case. You know, it was totally dismantled. And he, he bought it then in 1985. And if I'm not wrong, it was uh, 4,000 pounds, which was rather much money at that point. The oil tank was missing. The transmission cover, the chain guard was missing, wrong fork, no mud guards, so it was an incomplete basket case. And then it was lying at uh, Bo Ingersson's um, barn for uh, another 20 years. And around uh, 2005 he started the restoration of the bike. And at, all at that point, I, Braff Superior was my dream bike. So I contacted him just because I wanted to buy parts of him. First thing I bought from him was a petrol tank. He had a spare extra petrol tank. Could I buy that tank from you? Oh yes, it's so ugly, I don't want it, he said so. <laughs> okay. And then I asked, so how much do you, how much are you asking? No, oh, you have to you have to bid, he said. And oh God, I thought, uh, because that was to be the first deal with him. And you don't want to ruin, you don't want to be greedy. On the other hand, you don't want to pay too much. And I, oh God. 2,000 kroner, I said. Oh, it's awfully too much, he said. No, you're not allowed to pay more than 1,800, he said. Okay, and then later, he became a very good friend of mine. I, I, I realized that, that that was his thing. It didn't matter what kind of sum you said, he was always underbid it. So I bought that uh, petrol tank from him and I made a, a Braff Superior replica. And then I exhibited it at this uh, Nortelje custom bike show in 2005. And I was in the classic class, of course. And, and then when they, they revealed the winners, that was me, one of them three was me. And I remember I, uh, I cried. The um, chief designer of, of BMW motorbikes were there. He's a French guy. He told the design team of BMW. And when I'm standing there in the, the, this uh, area behind the scene, this, uh, this French guy comes up and said, uh, I voted for you, he said. <laughs> and that's where my career <laughs> peaked. <laughs> and the chief designer.
Bo had an intention about restoring this, this motorbike, this SS80. Because in 2008, there's supposed to be a 50th anniversary of the TT racers in Hedemora. First thing he did for this motorbike, he made some massive megaphones in stainless steel, of course, because he wanted to scare the shit out of the whole audience. <laughs> at his anniversary. That was his aim. He was a crazy man, very nice. And then in the winter of 2007 and 2008, the bike was finished. And then he phoned up the uh, organizers of, of uh, this uh, anniversary, the TT anniversary. I have a very nice motorbike. It's a Braff Superior SS80. It's newly restored. Do you think it would be nice if I come there? Well, oh yes. Oh, yes, we would love that. They, they said, so, oh yes, but then I... Uh, I will um, make a reservation that weekend for that. Okay, then we will send you an invoice of 1,200 kroners, the organizer said, for him to show up an extremely rare motorbike. So then uh, he threw off the phone and he immediately phoned me and said, Mats, do you want to buy my, my, uh, my, my SS80? And that's how I became an owner of a Braff Superior SS80, a, a very unique bike. Last week and I, I was racing on a new anniversary up at these TT races and I wanted to approach the organizers and you know really shake their hand. Thank you very much because you were so stupid and rude <laughs> 15 years ago and I'm not sure if they know this story. <laughs> their stupidity 15 years uh, earlier is one of the reasons I am an owner of a very unique Motorbike, Braff Superior SS80 from 25 today. Yeah. Now it's a true story. Very, very funny facts. There's so much more to tell. So I got the possibility to buy uh, this uh, SS80 the spring of uh, 2008. Yeah. Rather shortly I was <laughs> removing parts f from it. The transmission cover wasn't so nice. The chain guard was a copy of a Harley Davidson. I removed the, f the front mud guard. It's rather nice with an exposed front um, wheel, especially if you have a nice vintage tire. But there were several parts which was not uh, original on the bike. The front fork was from a Triumph, a wartime Triumph. And by an extreme coincidence, the correct fork shows up outside Gothenburg in Sweden. The owner he knew what he had, and I had to pay extremely much money at that point. But it was like buying the, the SS80. You get just one opportunity, so I, I had just to get the money. Then uh, when we were, were putting it on the bike, it was, you know, it just fitted. Right, fit. Mm. Without any modification, which is... Uh, which is an evidence that it, it has been fitted to the, uh, the Braff Superior. And the, the people in, in the Braff Superior Club in England, they said, how the hell have you found that? They, you can't find them because they are so extremely rare. So that was a very big part for bringing back uh, that SS80 to even more original. It's matching number. When we're talking matching number, it's mainly the engine and the, the, the frame. So they have been together since nine, when it left the factory in January 1925. Then when I bought the bike, the petrol tank was painted black because uh, the ex-owner, Bo, and the plating company that said, uh, we can't plate this tank, this is awfully too bad condition. My tinsmith, Jörgen Nilsson in Sweden, he said, we should have a try. Because he thought it as a, as a, a test piece. We took off the petrol tank and I brought it to him and he had it for four years, <laughs> struggling with it. Then it went to the plating company, Dalakron, in Borlänge and they said, oh, this is... Pfft. So they put on the first layer, you dip it in copper, sandpaper to grind it and it becomes hole in the petrol tank. <laughs> And they said, we, 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 we can't do it. Please, I said, please do it. I don't care about the cost. And yes, it became rather expensive. <laughs> From 1929 and onwards, they were putting chrome on the 29. tanks. Yeah, because the method arrived around 1929. Finally, I had this nickel-plated petrol tank. And after that, 
I've been exhibiting the society, and and it's an eye catcher. I mean, you can stand for you know. 200 meters and say, oh, over there, that's a good looking bike. And I have uh, won every exhibition I've been participating in. Most of the Brough's appearance are in museums or in private collections, polished. But I race mine, and the ex owner, Bo, who is dead today, he, he, he would have loved it. His thoughts is about if you can't lean the bike towards a tree, you shouldn't use it. The bikes were produced to be used, so I think he's up there somewhere and, and happy how I, I'm using the bike. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been slightly over 100, but uh, I stopped there. <laughs>